Good morning and happy Easter. I'm Pastor Melanie. Welcome to uh, University United Methodist Church. We are so glad you are here today as we celebrate um, the resurrection of Jesus. We're just you know, excited. We've got flowers, we've got music, we've got lots of uh, wonderful things planned for this service. And um, if you would like to make an offering today, we have baskets on the windowsills, and you can do that as you exit. Um, we also have a Venmo app at UUMC Donation, and you can use your um, electronic devices to make uh, an offering if you'd like. Um, or if you're watching us online, that's a good way to do it. Um, <clears throat> this year, for our special Easter offering, we're um, dividing that offering between two local charities that um, help with food hunger issues and food insecurity. Um, the offering will be divided evenly between the MSU Food Bank, which serves 6,000 students, um, and their families, and it's run by students for students. And then the other um, is the Greater Lansing Food Bank Garden Project. And there are, believe it or not, 90 gardens um, that help feed people all over the mid-Michigan area. And so our special Easter offering will go to that. If you want to give to that offering, you can write a check and put Easter offering in your memo line or just choose the Easter offering on the Venmo app, and uh, we'll be giving you an update uh, about that offering. But we thank you for your generosity. And now, without further ado, our REACH Band is going to get things started as uh, we begin this resurrection morning. Good morning, everybody. How are, how are you doing this morning? Yeah, happy Easter. Well, I invite you to rise if you're able and sing with us. Uh, our first selection today is Rise and Shine by The Belonging Co. Arise, there's a new day upon us. So come out of the darkness, stand in the morning light. Take heart, there's a new wind that's blowing. Heaven's gates are wide open, it's time to lift your eyes. It's time to lift your eyes. Rise and shine for the light, the light has come. Jesus Christ, come behold the risen sun. Hold on to hope, shake off your fear, sing like you know. Is here. Rise and shine for the light. The light has come. Oh, 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 oh. the light has come. Oh, wake up. It's the dawn of revival, calling saints and disciples into the promised land. Oh, sing praise, let it rise from your spirit, so the whole world can hear it. Oh, lift up God's holy You know freedom is here. Right. 
your feet a dance open your mouth and praise him we made it through the evening this is the joy of the morning hope is alive and breathing life has a brand new meaning we made it through the evening this is the joy of the morning oh set your feet to dancing open your mouth and praise him we made it through the evening this is the joy of the morning hope is alive and breathing life has a brand This is the joy of the morning. This is the joy of the morning. This is the joy of the morning. Oh, this is the joy of the morning. Rise and shine for the light, the light is Your goodness is running after, 
is running after me And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness so good Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made for Oh, I'm gonna see the goodness of God. I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. Please be seated. Indeed, we sing of the goodness of God, especially on this Easter morning and uh, God's faithfulness. And we invite you to join in our Easter prayer. The words will be on the screen um, and we'll speak them together in one voice. Holy God, author of all life, we celebrate today Christ's resurrection. We celebrate life and light, joy and hope, peace, and love, for these are the gifts made possible by Christ's victory over sin and death. The resurrection bears witness to your power to defeat all that opposes you. It affirms your good and holy purpose to rescue and restore all of creation. It proclaims your redemption for all the peoples of the world. It testifies to your active and ongoing work in our lives. The resurrection is our assurance, that promise that we cling to, trusting that there is nothing, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation that is able to separate us from your love, which is made known to us through Christ Jesus, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Michael Jones, our children and youth uh, director to come forward and uh, kids are invited to join her. Good morning. If there are any kids in the house that want to come down, you're welcome. And if you're watching online, you're welcome to listen too. Good morning. Happy Easter. Did you know that Easter has another name. It does. Actually, it has lots of names, but I'm only going to talk about one of them today. That name is Resurrection Day. Resurrection Day. Resurrection means that something came up, rose up again. And we call this day Resurrection Day because it's the day that we celebrate Jesus rising again. Good morning. On Good Friday, Jesus died. And it was sad. And it was scary. It's called, that's a good question. It's called Good Friday because even though it was really sad and scary that something, was hap that something happened to Jesus, right? He died. Something good was coming later. And that's what we celebrate on Easter, the resurrection that Jesus died and rose again. Let's talk about that upstairs. I do have an answer to you. Um, so a few weeks ago, I invited my friends who were here 
for church to put something inside this box. Yeah, it was a paper that said Alleluia on it. And a bunch of my friends colored Alleluias, and they filled the box with a thick stack of papers. And I told them to wait and see what would happen to those Alleluias on Easter. So my box for the season of Lent, the wait and see season, was full of Alleluia papers. And now... It doesn't sound like it's full of paper anymore, does it? It does sound a little bit like money. Would you like to see what's in here? Bells. We put our alleluias in the box because Lent is sometimes a sad time. It's a time when we think about things that have gone wrong. But Easter is a happy time. And the word alleluia is a happy word. It means woohoo! Right? So we say alleluia on Easter because woohoo, Jesus is alive again. And I've put bells in my alleluia box. It's not a wait and see box anymore. It's an alleluia box because bells are an instrument that say alleluia when they ring. Well, that's why a lot of churches ring bells before church starts. They're saying, Alleluia, come and worship God. So I'm going to give you guys a bell to ring right now, okay? And we'll take them, if you want to come to Sunday school, we'll take them upstairs with us. Will you get these bells? Here, I'll scooch. Here you go. All right, now hold your bell in your hand. I yanked my cord. Hold your bell in your hand like this first. When you hear me say Alleluia, I want you to ring your bell. Are you ready? On your mark, get set. Alleluia! Woohoo! Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen. Jesus is alive. All right, stop. Alleluia! Now, as we go upstairs, we're going to talk a little bit more about Easter and what it means that Jesus is alive. If you want to come upstairs to Sunday school, you can carry your bell with you. And if you want to stay with your grown-ups, I need you to put your bell back into the box. If you come upstairs, we're baking a treat. I don't know if that will sway you, but that's why I have an apron. Are you ready? Let's go. Thank you, Michael, and thanks for a wonderful time out in the garden. We had a great Easter egg hunt in between the services. I'd like to invite uh, Catherine and Anne to come. They're going to use the pulpit mic uh, to share a little bit about grief because Easter is a day of grief as well as joy. Good morning and happy Easter. Catherine and I are really happy to take a couple of minutes this morning to invite you to our next round of UUMC's Grief and Loss Support Group. You may remember that we launched Grief Share last spring. Building on the strengths of that program and feedback from the participants in our small group, we revised the sessions to draw from contemporary grief experts, and each session will offer time to learn that content, to reflect on it, and simply to be in community with others who have experienced loss. We all have experienced grief. We all have something that we carry. This group offers the chance to honor that grief in a caring space and lighten its weight. Wherever you are in your experience with grief and loss, please know you're not alone. It was a privilege to host the group last year, and we look forward to doing so again this week. Catherine has a few more details about the session, and we both will be back after service if you have any questions. Great. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
This group starts this week on Wednesday in the conference room at 7 o'clock and will wrap up just before Memorial Day. We also have um, the ability to uh, connect with you by Zoom if you can't make it in person but want to participate. Just email one of us and we'll put you on so you, there's a neat little thing that makes you feel like you're in the room. You can see everybody in the room and hear what we're saying and participate and see the videos that way. Um, so we welcome anyone, as Anne said, wherever you are on your journey, because it doesn't really end, that grief. <laughs> it comes and goes throughout your life. And I know in our last group, we found people discovering, I thought I was here for this, but now I'm seeing how that impacted me from many years ago. So we welcome you wherever you are. Hear now these words from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. (coughs) Excuse me. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary 
came to look at the tomb. Look, there was a great earthquake, for an angel from the Lord came down from heaven. Coming to the stone, he rolled it away and sat on it. Now his face was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so terrified of him that they shook with fear and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, don't be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here because he's been raised from the dead, just as he said. Come, see the place where they laid him. Now hurry and go tell his disciples he's been raised from the dead. He's going on ahead of you to Galilee. You'll see him there. I've given the message to you. With great fear and excitement, they hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell his disciples. But Jesus met them and greeted them. They came and they grabbed his feet and they worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that I'm going into Galilee. They will see me there. Several years ago, I traveled to Cleveland, Ohio for both the memorial service of my college roommate's mother and the birth of our other college roommate's first child. In the picture you see on the screens, From one of my scrapbooks, you see the newborn baby and the handouts that I brought on grief and loss to share at the memorial service. Throughout that long weekend visit, I traveled back and forth from the memorial service and cemetery to the hospital birthing wing, from the tears of grief to the loss of a loved one to the excitement and joy of new life. Within the same 24-hour period, I welcomed a new baby and helped bury a beloved mother. It was an obituary and a birth announcement combined, or what preacher Tom Long likes to call a collision of incommensurate worlds, a lot like Easter. On the one hand, Easter is about death and cemeteries and the grieving women who make a sad pilgrimage to the tomb of Jesus. On the other hand, Easter is about the now risen Jesus, full of life and joyful greetings and assurances not to be afraid. Easter is the collision of incommensurate worlds, a lot like an obituary and a birth announcement together. Matthew's gospel account of the Easter story reflects this shocking collision of the worlds of death and grief, new life and joy. Matthew writes about the temple militia given the assignment to guard the tomb of Jesus. Their job is to seal that giant stone into the open rock of the tomb and then to take shifts, standing to the right and the left of the tomb, swords ready for whatever might happen. Matthew tells us what did happen was an earthquake, where the skies opened and the angel appeared like a flash of lightning. Everything, it seems, was shaking, and the angel, God's messenger, Matthew tells us, rolled that great stone away and sat on the stone and then announced to everyone, Jesus is not here for he has been raised. Reflecting on this collision of the worlds of death and life, Matthew writes these words, the guard shook and became like dead men. Two worlds collide and everything turns upside down. Who's dead here? Who's alive here? In the first world, the guards stand confidently on the solid ground of military might, equipped with weapons sufficient to outmatch any mortal foe, firm in their responsibility to keep the corpse of Jesus safely in the tomb. In the second world, the guards are left shaking along with the trembling earth. Jesus, we thought was dead, is now alive, and the guards, who we assumed were alive, are now like dead men. The world of life and death have collided like an obituary and a birth announcement, and everything, everything 
has changed. Now, <clears throat> we might be tempted to leave it here. We might be tempted to just order some beautiful Easter flowers and sing some beautiful songs and give ourselves and others what I would call the Easter pep talk. The Easter pep talk. It's kind of like what the coach does in the halftime or if you're in hockey in those periods in between, right? It's the pep talk. You ready? We may be down. We may be going through some hard things, but take heart. Hang in there. Don't give up because Easter's coming. We may be tempted to tell ourselves that Easter is simply the hope of the by and by, the promise we look forward to someday. And so Easter is the time when we tell ourselves just to take heart, to hang in there, hang on to hope. But this kind of thinking overlooks the radical, literal, earth-shattering message of Easter. You see, Easter doesn't simply give us hope for a better day. Easter changes all of our days. Easter tells us the world of death has passed away. It's been vanquished, it's been conquered, it's been changed forever. One of the Easter traditions we have in this church is to sing the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. And one of the lines in that powerful song comes from the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. The words from Revelation 11:15 describe this radical, life-changing message of Easter. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. And in the Messiah, we sing the King James Version, so it's, and he shall reign forever and ever. That, my friends, is a totally different message than simply saying, hang on to hope, don't give up, it will get better someday. Easter means that this old world is exposed as a lie. And that the new real world is revealed in the risen one. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord. Easter means it's actually a different world. And we, we, you and I are invited to change our citizenship. Easter invites us to leave that familiar world of death and heartbreak, despair and loss and embrace the new unfamiliar world of resurrection and new life. No wonder everyone was afraid. Matthew describes the fear that gripped everybody in the story. The guards were literally shaking in their boots. The angel tells the women who come to the tomb, don't be afraid. It's the first thing the angel says, explaining that Jesus is no longer here in this place of death. Instead, he's risen, just like he said. The angel actually introduces this new world to the women, but knowing that it will be really hard for them to actually believe it. He encourages the women to Look in the tomb, telling them, you see, it's empty. There's nothing there. Go on now. Go on now and tell the other disciples he's been raised from the dead, and you, you will see him in Galilee. Mentioning fear and excitement, Matthew writes that the women leave the tomb to tell the other disciples what they've seen and heard, and as they're leaving, Jesus appears to them. And he says, you guessed it, Do, don't be afraid. Those are his words as well. It's significant that in just 10 verses, fear is mentioned four times. It's also significant that both the angel and Jesus tell the women, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Fear it's often the reality we feel when we're faced with something new, something unexpected, something surprising, something unfamiliar. It's understandable. As much as we long for the world of death to pass away, for the grief and the heartbreak, the pain and the suffering, 
to go away, it feels normal to us, doesn't it? We're so used to that feeling of despair and dread. It's hard to imagine that there could be anything different. And in fact, if we're honest, we're actually afraid of leaving that world because it's what we know. And, well, you know, we're Midwesterners. So we say things like, well, it could be worse. It could be worse. It's one of the things we say. Live in other parts of the country. They don't say stuff like that. We say that. You know, at least here in this world of pain and heartbreak and suffering, we know what we know. Jesus understands our fears. And that's why both in the birth stories of Christmas and the resurrection stories of Easter, he and the angels reassure us by saying, don't be afraid. Now, it's not the assurance that nothing can go wrong because often things do go wrong, don't they? It's not the assurance that everything turns out for the best because if we're honest about it, that seldom happens. Rather, it's the assurance that whatever happens to us, God has the power and the strength to uphold us and that nothing we can encounter will be stronger than God's love and God's love is ultimately triumphant. An ancient benediction sums it up well. May you fear God so much that you fear nothing else at all. Think about that for a minute. May you fear God so much that you fear nothing else at all. He's not here. He's risen. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Alleluia. Amen. Woohoo! Easter is both an obituary and a birth announcement, embracing the heartbreaking realities of death and loss and announcing the new world of resurrection and life. Easter doesn't just give us hope for better days. It changes all of our days forever and ever. Think for a minute about all the difficult, heartbreaking things you have lived through or maybe you're living through them right now. Illness, the loss of a loved one, or for some of you, multiple losses, the end of a relationship that you had hopes for, the loss of employment. Think about our world right now, wars and violence and racism and poverty, ugly politics, division, death, destruction. Like an obituary and a birth announcement together, Easter means that in the midst of a world so broken, so filled with violence and hatred, overwhelmed with despair, in the cemetery, in the hospital room, in the operating room or the rehab center, or in the room of broken hearts and broken dreams, Easter announces an end to that world of death and despair. Not just an end but a new beginning, the world of the resurrected one. Jesus tells us, do not be afraid and invites us to follow him because he's gone on ahead of us to Galilee. And Jesus invites us to change our citizenship to his new world. Doing so means that we live like Easter people. Meaning, we sing our alleluias great and small, We ring our bells while it's still dark and even while we may still have tears on our cheeks. Like an obituary and a birth announcement, we carry forth the realized hope of this new risen Lord in the midst of our lives. We live as people of this new world. He's not here. He's risen just as he said. See, the tomb is empty. Go on now. And join him in Galilee and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
Like the collision of an obituary and a birth announcement, Easter tells us in no uncertain terms, the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Woohoo, woohoo. Amen. I want to invite you to rise as if you were able again to sing Because Jesus Christ is Alive. Yeah. Woohoo.
You can be seated for just a moment. We are so glad you've joined us today and wish you a happy Easter. We'd love to connect with you either in person or online. We have a, a link there um, that you can connect with us. On the back of the bulletin, if you're here in person, there's a whole list of new um, classes and groups and activities that are starting for the spring. And if that feels like the next right step for you, we'd love for you to join us in addition to the Grief Support Group, we've got a number of things that are kicking off uh, next week and so and continuing through um, uh, Memorial Day. And some of them are just one-time things as well, and they include mission opportunities and ways to serve our community. So check it out, and uh, we'd love to have you join us. Next Sunday, April 7th, we are excited to welcome Rebecca Wilson, a queer poet and storyteller. Rebecca will be sharing six original poems in our worship services, weaving life experiences with scripture and spirituality. Her words, her heart, her honesty will move you to laugh, cry, wonder, and maybe write a poem of your own. At noon, there will be a talkback time with Rebecca where she'll share how she came to write um, her upcoming book being released in April called Unraveling and how she connects it with the upcoming general conference meeting of the United Methodist Church. You can sign up for the luncheon in the gathering space today or online and uh, you're really, really going to enjoy uh, Rebecca next week. I can't wait to be here and, uh, and hear all of her poems. So I hope that you'll make a point to attend either service. Now, some really, really exciting news because this is the last service of the day, which makes pastors on Holy Week say, woohoo, right? Um, because it is, we would like to invite you, if you'd like to, to take home some of our lovely Easter flowers. Maybe you need the flowers for your Easter table or your apartment or your dorm room. Maybe there's someone you know who could use a word of Easter hope. So take, take some flowers for them and make a point to call them up and drop the flowers off for them. Um, so we hope that, that, you, that you'll, you'll take them. We have lilies, we have tulips, and uh, please um, take them home so that they can help bring a word of resurrection and, uh, to, and new life um, in this kind of gray, wintry, March, April, April, or March Easter day in Michigan. Go forth from this place, trusting in the one who says, my kingdom is not of this world. It's a new place with a new purpose and a new message. Go forth to live into that kingdom filled with hope and life and new birth, a place where all the things that pull us down in this world no longer exist. Happy Easter. Alleluia. Amen.
precious hope, cause Jesus Christ alive. So we can rejoice, though we grieve by various trials for a little while. Cause a genuine faith under testing brings honor and glory to our great King. My God, born again because Jesus Christ is alive our living hope is in our inheritance because Jesus Christ is alive no grip of fear Jesus Christ is alive. We're free from guilt. We're free from shame. Because Jesus Christ is alive. We're free to live for Jesus' name. Because Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is alive.